it is very interesting that the pain word was already there but it was not introduced in a scientific manner like you know the hippocrates who was considered who is considered as the father of modern medicine he first mentioned about that the pain which happens in our body that is due to the imbalance in various types of body fluids which are there in our body but then afterwards the picture which here has been shown this picture is actually taken from rainy descartes book which was published in the year 1664 he mentioned that pain is as a result of the disturbance which is happening in the neurofibers that reaches the brain so for the first time a scientific attribute was given to the subject which is the pain psychology or the pain biology now as we see that it is a part of physiology or a neurocognitive aspect it is not the pain which we use in a common man's language from scientific world it it is the nociception the pain feeling or the feeling of pain is actually known as nociception which is defined as a process of communication between a site of damage of the tissue and the brain or the spinal cord that is central nervous system now as the pain goes on and on the pain has got a definite pathway remember i am not going into the heart core pathways of the neurobiology but we have to mention one thing that pain pathway which is actually there in our body that is made up of various substances which includes number 1 transduction what is the transduction when we have an obnoxious stimuli we have an noxious stimuli which is happening to be a pain stimulus that will be conducted transduced from the mechanical to the electrical sensation and that will be now transmitted the second step being transmission but ultimately all these things have no value unless it is being perceived at the central machinery a cpu the brain the perception now whenever we perceive the pain they know so our work is not done if we go on and on and on with the pain stimuli being affecting us it's very detrimental for us also because pain has been there it is a evolutionary aspect pain is there in order to act as a protective device for us to survive in the midst of agrees of nature so ultimately it is the modulation of the pain which is important through the different pathways of the pain modulation is very important and most of the medications also help to modulate this pain so that ultimately a nociceptive pathway or a nociception pathway is successful now when i say nociception definitely the there should be some receptors which are called pain receptors which are triggered due to pain and those are nothing but the sensory receptors sensory nerve free endings which are there that are ex excited or sensitized and when these happens we have a very simply i have given this picture we have what is known as nociceptive pain the pain associate we associated with the tissue injury or the damage which is happening at the level of any target tissue or even maybe a potential damage occurring at a particular tissue so what you can see from the picture is when you have that nociceptive pain stimuli or stimulus that will be targeted through the spinal cord so please note here the most important aspect which we must not forget in terms of pain pathway is everything happens with respect to spinal cord spinal cord has a special feature called dorsal horn and that dorsal horn is the ultimate target or the trigger or the receptor which takes into account both the afferent as well as the efferent pain pathway and then definitely comes through higher the spinal column comes the stimuli which is transduced and finally transmitted to the brain which you can see from the picture itself but all those things which i am mentioning till now is about the afferent stimuli that means the pathways which help us to recognize that we are in pain with the help of the different other uh, sensory structures of the brain but what ha happens after that from the brain again there is also another pathway we call it efferent pathway away from the brain so that is where the important things happen in terms of the pain receptivity 
in terms of the pain modulation in terms of the whether the pain needs to be inhibited or we should have some other sympathomimetic stimuli effect so when we say all these aspects of this pain we should remember one thing that nociceptive pain is whatever the pain which we face in day to day life that is about the nociceptive pain but when i mention the nociceptive pain it means the pain which occurs due to the damage at a particular tissue site that has nothing to do with the nerve damage but when we take into account another term which is also a part of pain psychology this is called neuropathy and therefore the pain is called neuropathic pain and what is that the neuropathy is the damage or the dysfunction of one or more nerves that result in the tingling sensation the numbness sensation and associated area undergoing some muscular weakness and the pain therefore can be there in the peripheral nervous system as well as at the level of central nervous system that means brain and spinal cord uh we have heard about the people who have got the diabetic neuropathy sciatica pain the trigeminal neuralgia this type of pain all come under neuropathy because as you can see in the picture the neural axon which has been shown to be a normal when there is injury at the level of nerves you can see that it is called the neuropathic pain now here i just want to uh, add here trigeminal neuralgia is a very common problem which is a very common chronic pain problem which is there in human beings where uh, the fifth cranial nerve trigeminal nerve is being affected and you know there is a pain associated in the uh, in the facial region in that particular region when whenever you eat whenever you use that particular region of the face you are at having that neuropathic pain that is a very important uh, diagnostic pain of neuropathy so neuropathy and nociceptive pain these are two different terminologies associated with what is known as pain neurocognition now to make it very simple somatogenic pain is a type of pain when happens with respect to any target body tissue that means the pain can be a body pain somatic pain that is uh, it can be on the skin superficial pain it can be deep inside it can be subcutaneous or it can be deep dense inside we call it visceral pain like we can have the pain in the uh, in the at the level of uh, stomach uh, intestine brain heart on the other hand we have the neuropathic pain which i discussed but there is another pain which we must not ignore and that is where the problem lies the psychogenic pain the mental pain the pain for there for which uh, there is no known physical cause but it has been seen from the different type of imaging devices that there is disturbance in the processing of the information at the level of central nervous system so the pain is there the psychological interventions should be therefore attributed at this type of pain which is called psychogenic pain i will come across it later on so remember there are two types of pain basically somatogenic versus psychogenic pain now since this is not about the neurobiology of the pain i just want here to clarify about the historical uh, pathway how the pain theories have been also modulated and help us to add to our knowledge of pain psychology let's come uh, to the theory which is called specificity theory this is an old theory given by max miller and von frey he mentioned for the first time that this uh, a specific sensation a specific sensory feeling is independent of any other sensation that means if you have the temperature being a stimulus you will be feeling cold or hot if you have a pressure based stimuli you will feel that pressure on your body so individual sensory aspects are there similarly pain is also such an independent feeling so it should have a specific nature of pathway it should have a specific neurological receptor triggers as well as the centers for modulation so that was the specificity theory where the specificity of pain being a specific type of concept was introduced for the first time then with the gradual evolution of scientific theory scientific concepts very important was finding out the neuroanatomical aspect the temporal aspects of the pain this was given by henry head who for the first time mentioned a model where he showed the relationship did exist between the parietal cortex temporal cortex frontal cortex and therefore as well as we call it the cerebral cortex 
together with it comes the thalamus now here i just want to mention thalamus is nothing but a switch on and off device it, it is just like a on and off switch if you make the switch on the trigger from the peripheral nervous system from the periphery will come to the brain and if you switch off the device the thalamus then obviously you will not be getting the sensations there so the relationship between the cerebral cortex and the thalamus is really very important and that was being propounded in scientifically that time by henry hit then gradually the integrative concept of nervous system came who by the Charles Sherrington, who also was the uh, person who coined uh, the term synapse and we are now well versed with the term but that time the synapse term was not known and he also got the Nobel Prize for that in physiology for that. Now, he mentioned the aspect of integrative physiology of nervous system. That means nervous system is not a solitary attribute. We are all system-based human beings, system-based organism. We have different systems being all interlinked together, interconnected together. So if we have a pain of nerve, obviously we know about the term which is called neuromuscular structure. So the corresponding muscle is being damaged. The pain can be attributed to the corresponding nerve through conduction through the particular nerve. So it can be also that the nerve growth factors which are there in order to maintain the good health of the nerve, that uh, neurotropic factor should be conducted through the blood vascular system. So we require the circulatory system too. There should be a lot of uh, hormones which play a very important role in signifying the processing of the ne ne neurological stimuli. So in that way, endocrine system works wonder. So that means the integrative action of nervous system is really important. Then, very, very important concept in the pain psychology or pain cognitive biology. It came with the get control theory of pain. From the picture itself, you can understand if we have a lots of uh, stimuli which are coming to the spinal cord. And there, there is a structure called the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. Through that spinal cord, ultimately spinal cord that dorsal horn will decide whether i will allow the particular pain, pain stimuli to enter and come to the uh, brain or not so this was the first time the gate control concept showed that the spinal cord acts as a gate either blocking the pain signal or letting them pass on to the brain so that was the concept given by mills of and wall together who mentioned for the first time the gate control theory of pain now, to talk briefly about that, I, since I told you that I will not be coming into the deep, dense, hardcore reality of the neurobiology of the pain, but we must learn something from this gate control theory is that. Now, we often have the concept that we are in pain and we get the pain from certain types of stimuli. But it is not that always the fact that if all the pains will be coming to the pain stimuli, will be coming to the brain and the brain will be always waiting for the stimuli to come and judge thereby. Now, it has been found that, as, as I mentioned about the uh, different types of afferent fibers, there are two types of fibers, which we have to know. One is the large A delta fibers, and another are small C fibers. So there are two types of fibers, which are important for gaining the control over the pain modulation. So once we have that stimulating the large A delta fibers, there are a number of fibers, remember, of which we are talking only about the two distinct, distinct type of fibers, definite type of fibers, which are A delta fibers and C fibers. Now, when this large C A delta fibers are being stimulated, then, you know, the gate which I mentioned, that gate will be closed. And the transmission of the corresponding neuronal uh, stimuli will be stopped unless we are getting a continuous on and on reaction from the beginner, that means the, uh, the point of from which the pain is coming, that means the origin point of the pain. Otherwise, if it is only for once, then the pain will be stopped at that point. But on the other hand, if the pain is being obtained from the smaller ones, that is the smaller C fibers, then the gate will be open and the brain is ready to get the pain perception to be on. So that was the uh, get control theory of pain, which was mentioned uh, by the two scientists. And you know, there are lots of studies which have been given uh, based upon this. There are many other concepts which has been added to this, but this is the basis of the get control theory. Now, this person, Melzo, 
actually he contributed throughout his life lots of studies on this neurobiological aspect of pain and he was the, again the same person you know who came up afterwards in 1968 together with another scientist Kenneth Cassy uh, he added some motivational component of the pain since uh, my topic is about the neurocognitive aspect of pain so it's not about the neural or the neurobiological it's also about the cognitive part so with that he added a motivational component of his gait control concept he mentioned that if i really want to describe pain pain should be described to have three important components and what are they number one is the sensory discriminative system that sensory or discriminative system is totally based upon the biological biological perspective that is nothing to do with other cognitive aspect but then he added two other important things which was the called the motivational aspect and the cognitive aspect so here comes the introductory term of what is known as motivational component of pain added to it was the cognitive system and what was that now motivational system was it's again the pain is there the pain comes through the normal transmission process but it depends upon our interpretation or how the way we are being affected that is how we are motivated or demotivated by that particular pain and that is called motivational component of the pain and again it depends upon our own uh, mental aspect how we can evaluate that in terms of pain intensity in terms of the pain stimuli so that is a cognitive aspect so motivational cognitive interpretation was given a very very important aspect in terms of the gait control theory being added and then in due course the same person the same scientist proposed another term which again evolved made a evolutionary uh, progress in the field of the pain biology he made in 1990 he came up with another uh, theory of pain which is known as neuro matrix theory of pain as the uh, term shows neuro matrix matrix we know that it is a type of pattern it is a type of uh, base or a platform where a lots of things are happening it actually helps in the interconnection of a number of materials being featured on a particular functional domain and he mentioned that pain should be considered as a multi dimensional experience produced by a particular neuro signature pattern of nerve impulses and the perception of the painful stimuli result from its active generation of subjective experience to a group of neurons matrix of neuron and which is called as neuro matrix so he told that if we have a type of sadness or in a particular sadness mediated pain if we have a grief mediated pain no sadness grief joy these particular terms we know in terms of english literature but you know there are no a minor difference in this term between the sadness and the grief between the joy and the pleasure joy and the happiness so that minor differences in terms of emotional attribute is being interpreted in terms of neuro signature because as human beings we are i consider ourselves to be a very complex organism in terms of emotion so so many emotional hybridization happens in our brain so neuro matrix theory of pain actually came as a wonderful aspect in pain biology so that was how the history of pain theories came up in the science of pain biology now now whenever we get a jolt whenever we get a particular pain a painful stimuli we say that we are in pain so that pain obviously will be obliterated through medication or through any type of other treatment and that pain if not staying for much longer duration we call it acute pain so acute pain is what we face in day to day life and we just forget it when the stimuli are removed but the chronic pain is something which the doctors are concerned about chronic pain is something which lasts longer than 3 months 3 to 6 months and often longer so it's totally a solitary experience is totally a complex uh, deeply personal experience of pain in terms of chronic pain and since i'm going to talk about the neurocognitive aspect this particular slide will give you idea why i say so if you see the picture here you can see that the physical and the mental two things are being shown here physical is what we mean in terms of neurobiological perspective but when we consider the mental aspect it is 
through the emotions it is through the cognitive attribute it is through our neuropsychological perspectives we are suffering or we are not suffering so this includes lots of support from the friends family support from the men from your own mental status so these are the mental or the cognitive aspects which play a very important role for giving this particular sensation of what is known as chronic pain so chronic pain is the subject of our study nowadays rather than acute pain because acute pain we can treat it but chronic pain is hard to treat and it is also the chronic pain you know which gives us the concept of the negative uh, interpretations of life including depression so pain it has been seen that it can negatively affect the cognitive performance whereas cognitively demanding task also may reduce pain perception that means if our brain is hijacked by some other good or positive thought processes we often forget pain i'm talking about chronic pain in this case remember so pain can negatively affect your performance if if you are in your pain if you feel that you are in pain you cannot concentrate on any other uh, performance any other particular uh, work but on the other hand if you can uh, distract yourself then the pain perception will also be coming diminished in that particular scenario so cognitive impairment can impact the pain experiences or pain perceptions and it has been uh, proved that i have mentioned before also that trigeminal neuralgia trigeminal neuralgia is a particular chronic uh, pain disease where it has been found that the people the patient who suffer from this they respond to the augmented pain perception that means if they have if they feel that they have a pain at the level of abdomen suddenly they also feel that they have also a headache pain or a migraine pain they have a pain in the heart so that means they have an overall overt augmented pain perception too and so that was given by the mayo clinic doctors fleming chronic pain uh, the cognitive pain and the emotion basis of pain all set together to give a pain triangle so that's the importance of pain triangle where the neurocognitive aspects are being focused upon now a very interesting concept was given by the uh linton and it all so there he mentioned about the pain psychology which was corresponding to the somatic pain the body pain musculoskeletal pain so i can guarantee that in our day to day life till now how many people have got uh, have been there successfully in their life without muscular without a single instance of musculoskeletal pain because uh, globally it has been accepted you know that uh, the low back pain is the top most type of chronic pain noted among the people globally so with that here you can see the uh, fear avoidance model of the concept where we have got the musculoskeletal pain where we can see if, if you uh, see the slide here if we get a get a injury if you get a jolt at a particular point this is i am talking about a particular pain stimulus or stimuli rather so obviously will be undergoing a pain experience then two things can happen in terms of cognitive perspective one is that you can have no fear you get the mental support of yourself your family or doctor support so you should have no fear or low or if you have a fear a low nature low intensity fear so you are able to confront the, that particular fear and therefore you will be recovering soon so that is a process of self recovery phase on the other hand if you have a pain experience which is aggravating day to day so we call it catastrophizing pain so if for example if you have a surgery like at the level of knee so you have a knee pain obviously you should be having a knee pain at that moment after surgery so the doctors will help you to or the physiotherapist will tell you to perform some task so that you will be utilizing that particular body nowadays doctors don't say that please sit idle or uh, have enough of bed rest no they say that use your organs use your particular structure so have mobility but you are afraid of movement you are afraid of having again and another bout of injury if you face any difficulty so with that fear of movement you really avoid that particular set of behavior set of doctors prescription set of uh, movement so you rather escape any type of physiotherapy 
so in that you are becoming too much of vigilant about your own pain sensation that you have that particular pain and your hyper vigilant of your pain stimuli so as a result you will not be doing any type of exercise you will not be utilizing that particular set of organ or the structure i am talking about the muscular skeletal pain so i am talking about the skeleto muscular system based pain so continuous disuse continuous disability will lead you to depression or rather misuse of that particular structure that will aggravate again another cycle of pain so this is what has been mentioned in terms of fear avoidance model now the climax of everything was given by the three tiered pain matrix three tiered pain matrix for the first time showed that the motivational component the cognitive component or rather the neuro cognitive aspect is so important in our day to day life you can see here in the picture very briefly or very lucidly i can just uh, tell you here that when you get a pain stimuli as i mentioned through the afferent pathway you are getting everything through the nociceptors and then being targeted to the part of spinal cord which i call it as dorsal horn so when i say the dorsal horn then we say that from that particular region the nociceptive stimuli will be transmitted gradually through various type of fibers i have mentioned about the two types of fibers so through the different types of fibers to be interpreted through the thalamus and then coming to the frontal cortex or rather the cerebral cortex now here in the first tier if you see the nociceptive tier the first tier here the importance is given to the thalamus the posterior thalamus i have already mentioned thalamus acts as a switch so if you have the pain stimuli and the pain is going on to the brain the thalamus is setting it on and so the pain characteristics the pain localization the intensity all are being encoded through their path through your pain afferent pathway to ultimately come to what is known as the prefrontal cortex and associated area we call it perceptive attentional tier so second tier deals with the perceptive attentional tier where the cognitive modulation attentional modulation and your bodily reactions to the pain will be ultimately there because it's ultimately your brain of the central nervous system part which is the brain here which interprets that you are in pain unless your brain says that you are in pain nothing will happen and so pfc here the prefrontal cortex the cingulate cortex the parietal cortex all come together to have that perceptive attentional concept and finally the highest thought processes of the pain interpretation is about the reappraisal or emotional tier so this is how the emotional component or the cognitive component the psychological psychological aspects the psychological factors are interpreted now if you like uh, if you know that the fire if uh, you have got suppose you have got a burn burning sensation before from a particular chemical irritant of a for a particular stimuli you know that the particular thing is affecting you so that will create a memory in your brain so memory formation will be there so next time if you have that particular pain stimuli you will realize it you will definitely not be uh, there to face the same round of the pain sensation you will be simply be withdrawing yourself or avoiding that particular pain stimuli so reappraisal emotional stimuli emotional tire of the pain matrix also help you in having the memory formation due to the particular pain stimuli so these are the different types of descending controls coming from the spinal cord through the various types of brain and finally modulation happens at the level of again the spinal cord which helps you to interpret how the pain will be ultimately be modulated in your entire body structure now people often say that uh till now i am talking about the neurobiological aspect people are uh, saying about the neurobiology neurophysiology electrophysiology the cognitive perspect but all the gen uh, the, the the genetic lovers they will be also very wonderfully they if they wonder they come across this pain matrix they will uh, just be surprised to see that lots of studies have been done in 
explain biology and you know it's again an open book chapter for you there are so many genes which are involved in the pain perception and modulation so here this slide will ultimately give you the idea that uh, there are so many genes which are affected and mostly the genes which are related to the uh, channel proteins because we know that electrophysiology or neuro physiology is based upon the propagation of neural impulses so mostly these are the channels which are getting affected and mostly of that sodium channels and the calcium channels are important on the other hand we should not also remember we forget we should not also always forget about the aspects of efferent pathway and what is that particular aspect so when the brain says that yes we are in pain the goal is either to alleviate pain that means or to make the pain being dissipated gradually through other downstream processes and here comes the importance of the other receptors in the pathway like here comes the importance of number of chemicals which are secreted in response to the pain stimuli here comes the importance of bradykinin histamin the serotonin dopamine and all other structures which are all other structures of the brain which are interpreting the pain as an important stimuli so these chemicals will ultimately help us to realize that the pain which has been there needs to be channelized for a greater goal that means the alleviating the pain so with that aspect the pain perception modulation is being done by a lots of chemicals which also do include the names we know endorphins and enkephalins endorphins you know they are the mood boosters they are the natural analgesics they are the natural sedatives which are there in our body that they must be secreted in order to reduce pain because otherwise we will always be in uh, uh, pain 24/7 so it's not that case so it is very important for us to understand the efferent pathways which are also there in terms of the uh, pain psychology which includes a lots of chemicals with the help of receptors nearby those pathways the most important receptor which i have to mention in this case is known as opioid receptor or the mu receptor opioids we all are aware of the term opioids so opioids receptors are also there naturally in our body they are uh, receptors uh, they are present in the membranes of the afferent neurons which are there they they are actually guided by the chemicals which are secreted again in response to the pain which we have already got through the afferent pathway so in this way the pain modulation will go on and on now one interesting uh, discovery was made recently in 18 may as you can see may 2020 so here for the first time it was seen that you know that when we get the general anesthesia that give rise to an analgesia or a loss of pain affect in our body so we don't get the pain okay now the scientists saw that it's not due to a number of pain centers being dampening out no it's actually a single switch which can really dampen the lots of pain centers which are activated in the brain due to the particular pain so the general anesthetics they are known to modulate the pain i'm talking about the chronic pain as well as the pain due to a particular surgery so that is through central pain suppression circuit in the amygdala please remember here amygdala is an important structure of the limbic system which is related to the fear sensitivity so if amygdala is on you are too much in fear so here here a lot of inhibitory neurons are being activated in the central amygdala due to the general anesthesia as a result of which we have lesser and lesser of pain sensation during anesthesia so this is a type of concept which was introduced in 2020 which showed that the ciga neurons the central amygdala neurons could be a, a potential powerful therapeutic target for diminishing the chronic pain in number of patients thereby so this was a important discovery recently now as i mentioned already about the psychogenic or mental pain the dsm3 you know what are there are a number of diagnostic manuals for the uh, the patients in psychology and diagnostic and statistical manual of mental disorder have recognized the pain from uh time memorial onwards but you know in the dsm3 when it was introduced then there there was a mention of the term psychogenic pain disorder which came to be replaced by another term called somatoform pain disorder so creating so much confusion some on my ornamentation of the term so so much confusion 
But then came the DSM-4 criteria where it was much more simplified. It was only told pain disorder. So it's now quite natural for us to understand pain disorder to be nothing but a chronic pain disorder or mental pain. And you know, people who succumb to the chronic pain often go to depression and for that suicide cases are increasing and every 40 seconds, the data suggests, every 40 seconds someone in this uh, globe is dying due to suicide. So that means the mental pain is really a very important aspect which we should be focusing on, the psychologist should be focusing on. Now. There are a number of pain assessment tools to find out the pain scale, the pain intensity. There are a number of tools and techniques being there. But here I have just mentioned for you, just to guide, that the Baker and Wong, they together used a very uh, simplified uh, pictorial uh, way of assessment of the pain scale. So see, you can see that the scale is ranging from the no pain to uh, the severe pain. So from a range of 0 to 10. So no pain, moderate pain, and the worst possible pain or severe pain. Now, it is being said that actually this, when it was first uh, taken into consideration, it was tested on the babies. The babies uh, showed number of uh, facial uh, expression. So from their facial expression, they took into account. But gradually, this concept is extrapolated to the patients who are um, uh, older than three years and even to the older patients also. So yeah, the pain assessment tools, are there are different pain assessment tools. There are also specific pain assessment tools for the older people also, which gives you the idea of the pain assessment. Now, I will come now to the final part, that means which is a very important part and also a favorite part for all. That means how to manage pain. If we are in pain, how to manage. The first thing which we should not forget is medicine. Because nowadays, if I say, if I tell you that, please uh, forget about the pain only without medicine, you will not believe me. You will not believe a doctor. You go to a doctor for taking or for getting a medicine. If the doctor do not prescribe you a medicine, then obviously you will be frustrated also. So pharmacological approach is very important. And you know, WHO pain ladder shows how you will be utilizing your medications. Okay. The, there is a strict guideline for usage of the medication therapy in terms of pain. If you see the ladder, there are three rungs, three steps, okay? In the mild pain, you are given a non-opioid therapy. Non-opioid means the, the usual uh, analgesics which we take, the usual uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs which we take, like the paracetamol, the ibuprofen, etc. So these are the non-opioid analgesics which we take. And then an adjuvant therapy means... For that, if you use some other uh, vitamin C, vitamin E, antidepressant, these are called the additional therapy. So basically, if you have a mild pain, the doctors will give you non-opioid therapy. Then, if you are having mild to moderate pain, then sometimes the weak type of opioids, like, you know, codeine, which is available, that is also given together with other therapy also. But if you have too much of pain, then the doctors are forced to give you the severe uh, opioid therapy therapy and we are aware of the term morphine so morphine is the strongest opioids which are recommended only when you do have a severe pain so these are the pharmacological approach and you know the opioids this uh, morphine etc they come to the same receptor which is called the opioid receptor the mu receptor it is the called the mu receptor there are a number of receptors also which respond to the opioids various types of opioids the mu receptor is the the most prevalent receptor which is getting uh, part of due to the number of attributes of pain and this is also the same receptor which gets the medication on and this receptor through this receptor the pain alleviation happens in terms of medicine and therefore uh, this Mu receptor is therefore the target of a lots of pharmacological drugs here, and added to it, you should can uh, you can get uh, the antidepressants also acting as wonder for you to have the additional effect or adjuvant therapy because antidepressants mostly they help you to go to sleep to have the lesser anxiety, lesser anxiety, and therefore uh, the most of the antidepressants are often being used not to alleviate pain directly, but to give an additional support system to help you to become stress-free. But the doctors definitely do not prescribe in the very first phase all those strong antidepressants or the strong opioid therapy. Now, what I love most 
to consider is the other systems which are there now there is a uh, implantable pain technology which again is found to be given by the doctors in the extreme cases i am talking about the severe pain two things are there one when as you know that most of the drugs when they are injected through your circulatory system they have to reach ultimately to the brain and they have to pass through the blood brain barrier most of the drugs fail to enter that barrier blood brain barrier so they cannot enter and even if they are given some type of coatings to, so that they can actually or, or any other form which gets converted from one form to another metabolic form so that they are uh, uh, they are available well inside the brain then those particular formulations can even be given in some greater high amount heavy dose but the direct infusion technology which is here uh, you can see in the slide itself it is called a pain pump it allows very small or a small amount of the medication opioid medications which are administered directly bypassing the blood brain barrier through the ultimately to the brain that is through the central nervous system when it is given directly to the central nervous system you are getting the drug directly injected inside the central nervous system so that is the essential criteria of pain pump but please remember this happens in the extreme of the cases the doctors will never give you the direct infusion in case of the minute pain and another is spinal cord stimulation technology which gives you the very low intensity electrical signals via the spinal cord to block the pain signal from reaching the brain so it is the spinal cord stimulation technique which are based upon the technology which is called implantable pain technology now very few people know about this particular point that if you have all throughout our body we have certain points which are called the trigger points now when i say trigger points you have the doctors have to identify the doctor or the physiotherapist they have to identify a particular points which are nearby the points where you get the damage or get the pain now if you say i have a pain in the shoulder point or if you have say that i have a pain at the level of knee there is a particular point a trigger point where the pain sensation is or the pain can transcend from the particular source point to other body parts we call it referred pain so be it a trigger point pain or the referred pain the trigger point injections are very important trigger point injection means it gives a type of local anesthetic at a particular trigger point where you are having a pain followed by the physical therapy so physiotherapy we call it. so physiotherapy what it is being done now if you numb that particular region through that anesthetic so obviously those particular pain sensation will be somehow temporarily will withdrawn so then you just stretch on with the help of the physiotherapist you simply stretch that particular region or massage that particular thing and that will ultimately help you to release the knots of the muscle which is being told as the uh, trigger points so the knots of muscles which are not undergoing proper relaxation and if the muscles get somehow relaxed in those particular regions then obviously your pain will be somewhat subdued remember it's not a matter of day the uh, technique is to be repeated and repeated as the person concerned gets the immediate benevolence activity from it so tpi is also another form of pain treatment which is being done and physiotherapy and the pain management we all are aware with the term because again i i uh, know that you have seen in your home that many people are getting the physiotherapy nowadays so physiotherapy when we say it means ultimately it will have uh, restore your uh, mobility restore your function and it can be directly through exercise it means if you are given some knee stretching exercise for example you are giving some uh, low impact aerobic uh, exercise on the other hand for the people who cannot do exercise on their own for that you can be there can be number of stimuli like electrical stimulation like the ultrasound therapy therapy the electro electrical nerve stimulation being done as you can see in the picture the transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation showing the very brief episodes of high uh, very low intensity electrical uh, stimuli are being conducted and added to it obviously you are aware quite that nowadays we call whenever you get a jo jolt here we say that yes please use ice pack okay so this type of therapies are coming under the physical pain management and therapy now the thing which i love to mention every time is the alternative forms of healing obviously we will have medical aspect obviously we will have pharmacological settings but it is ultimately the 
mind body medicine which is important the alternative forms of healing which is important because the mind body medicine is the concept which means that your mind is the ultimate ruler of your entire body and the cells are nothing but the subjects of your mind so the if the mind guides the cells or the mind gives a guidelines rules and regulation to the cells ultimately cells have the power to heal so mind has the power to heal itself and if the mind says or the mind gives the guidelines to the cells to heal themselves the cells also will be healed so that's the uh, importance of mind body medicine and here the people or the the patients are asked to simply by using a number of therapeutic approaches they are asked to alter the chemistry of mind so reprogramming into some other type of positive affirmations in your mind so that is true psyche healing or the pranic healing or the psycho uh, spiritual intervention and you know it's not my uh, speech the who has also coming has also mentioned about the importance of the psycho spiritual intervention in upliftment of mood as well as treating the lots of chronic pain patients and the two things which are very important in this aspect is number one the mindful awareness mindfulness because everything has got uh, centered around the activities which are going on in the mind mind means again our brain in terms of neurobiology so mindful awareness if you are aware of what is happening inside our deep dense regions of our body it is the mind who can take the control and it said that that because we know we are system based organism so cells will be ultimately be uh, getting together to form tissue tissue getting uh, together to form the body system system together with the human body so there is interconnection so if there are interconnection definitely there is signaling aspect happening uh, so we call it cell cell to cell signaling so signaling is happening between the two cells so if a set of cells in a particular organ gets damaged the other already good cells should come into the rescue through the positive affirmation of the mind and it has been seen that there has been obliteration of the bad cells and the more and more dominance of the good cells and that is the importance of mind body medicine it's not a very easy concept to understand in one day it has to be realized and the most important thing is you have to motivate yourself through your own trust or through your belief and there was there is when the comes the importance of what is known as energy healing and energy medicine the healing through energy chakras or the wheels of light or energy centers and what is that you if, if you think it totally on scientific basis you just have an understanding if i am talking about a cell a cell has got mitochondria and within the mitochondria you know the atp is being generated so if you consider mitochondria to be beaming with energy if you consider an organ beaming with mitochondria if you consider an organ having all the functionality of metabolism with respect to atp so it is the catabolism and anabolism which again is based upon the atp uh, turbulence so in that way energy means atp so energy medicine is nothing but the utilization of the part appearance of your energy balances in your body when we want to heal that balance if it is in imbalance we call it energy healing so let's very briefly talk about that the acupuncture for the pain management you must have heard about it the acupuncture is not a totally a scientific aspect i'm talking about it is not uh, considered uh, by the doctors who prescribe you with the pharmacological agents no it's a type of alternative form of healing which i am now considering acupuncture you can if you see the picture here i have mentioned about the meridians you have talked about you have known about the geographic meridians okay see our body is being divided into lots of meridians with respect to organs or the other structures like you, you have lung meridian you have heart meridian you have a heart covering we call it pericardium meridian you have colon meridian etc so acupuncture is a needle therapy it is based upon the concept or the belief rather that if you have the two poles of energy for every set of organ for every set of part of the body then the two poles of energy because uh, has been known as yin and yang the terms uh, came from the chinese traditional medication because acupuncture is considered as a traditional chinese medication based therapy so here it is being told that when you have a pain it means nothing but a disconnection between the two poles so 
it is a necessary for the acupuncture specialist to reconnect or rebalance the poles of energy if with the help of the correct placement of the needles now this concept is now extrapolated in the trigger point injection also you know so trigger point injection which is now considered as a scientific uh, methodology that can be together being utilized in case of acupressure or acupuncture related therapy so this acupuncture concept helps you to understand that if you have an imbalance then through acupuncture or acupuncture therapy you will be healed but again there are number of cell sittings you have to do, uh, do for this acupuncture and we there are a number I mean, we ordinary people cannot understand this acupuncture well because you have to understand the meridians there is a science or rather there is a particular theoretical aspect for acupuncture also if you understand that particular theoretical scientific aspect then acupuncture can also be considered as a science if not fully like the medical biology then very briefly mudra healing this is also very interesting that i have told you psychological healing or psyche healing which totally comes from the concept of pranic healing pranic healing when we say prana or vitality in chinese a concept it is called qi qi means the vitality the power house so our body is made up of five elements in bengali we say panchu tattva now the five fingers it present the five elements since we are all biological organisms in terms of biology i must say the five fingers are there they represent the five elements named as for example thumb agni tattva index vayu tattva middle finger akash tattva ring finger prithvi tattva and the little finger jal tattva so you can see the five elements are represented this is where the importance lies i am not propagating the concept of the mudras and the tattvas here no what i want to mention is the thumb is associated with the number of other organs and the cognitive behavior like it is associated thumb for example is associated with the stomach or the worrying nature emotion which is worrying nature index finger associated with lungs large intestine and sadness depression middle finger with heart circulatory system lung respiratory system so emotion when you are totally uh, have a impatience in nature ring finger with anger with gall bladder problem liver etc and the little finger finally associated with the so excretory system kidneys as well as fear stimuli so what we get here if we have a stomach ailment in terms of balance when if we have a lung ailment if we have large intestinal pain so if we have a pain associated with that structure if we can modulate the thumb index finger middle finger ring finger and the little finger based mudra healing then we can cure ourselves so that is the concept of mudra or yoga mudra healing like i have only given you one brief in uh, instance of this showing you the vayu mudra where you can see the vayu means air so vayu mudra index finger based tattva so here it is believed and it has been shown correlation and regression correlation studies have shown that it has the power to relieve more than uh, about 150 elements in our body all due to the we say vayu dosha or other imbalance of air so if you have a knee pain if you have a joint pain you have a synovial pain of fluid related pain that means the air spaces wherever whenever there are in in our entire body system there if you have if you, even if you're in digestive problem in digestive problems like you have gas like problems so those are also very important in terms of vayu mudra so lots of studies are being there for yoga mudra healing or the mudra so i don't have enough time to explain much more so this is very briefly mudra healing and behavioral therapy should also be there because just like any uh, medications or any psyche healing your mind has to be tuned so for that cognitive behavioral therapy is boosting out or promoting the positive affirm affirmations in your life that is related to the pain so if you have a chronic pain chronic pain can be treated with the help of cognitive behavioral therapy another relaxation therapy is being done by the technique which is called jacobson technique introduced by edwin jacobson he mentioned that if you relax your muscles 
obvious so the automatically the sympathetic stimulation will be stopped excess sympathetic arousal mechanism will be stopped and as a result the pain stimuli conducted due to the sympathetic nervous system will also be wiped away so that is the technique of relaxation and added to it comes the autogenic therapy which says that auto means self so and genic means genesis so if you can generate the, your self phrasing activity self concentration focusing activity help that is the relaxation therapy on your own with the help of music therapy chanting therapy then it is called autogenic therapy so with that i add here the music therapy concept uh, music therapy just remember it is music is nothing but a sound so sound in some tonal quality so music is made up of number of frequency and frequencies again just like the pain the therapy so the music therapy reaches ultimately the brain because it is the brain functioning which is being altered due to music therapy and lots of pain have been has been uh, obliterated by the music therapy and it has been proved so it is not a non scientific method it is never a non scientific method because the buddhist mantra the buddhism mantra the om chanting mantra these two mantras have been seen to act as a positive boost on the healing effect of many types of elements continuous chanting continuous reiterating the same words same hymns they have found to have a important effect on it why it is so because we know when we have a sound then it reaches the ear through the mechanosensory hair cell it reaches ultimately through the auditory nerves the brain cell and through the skin sensations now see the spinal cord to the brain cell so if pain is coming through those mechano receptors all throughout the spinal cord reaching the brain cell so music and pain should be coming throughout the similar types of uh, platform and you know when the music therapy since it comes in the form of sound in the form of standing wave in terms of physics and it is interpreted in terms of brain language in the form of brain wave category we call it delta theta alpha beta gamma so the standing waves they help to uh, ultimately have a healing effect on the respective organs which are found to be imbalanced in terms of its own frequency here i would just like to add one thing that whenever uh, individual organs are being mentioned every material every structure has its own frequency so if that frequency if that particular vibration if the natural synchronization is lost then we say the particular organ is in disease condition so if from external device if we can help that particular resynchronization or re uh, resetting that particular organ vibration back to their own for natural form then we are safe so with this concept comes the soma energetics concept of david hulls which shows the importance of the seven chakras which are there we call it energy chakras or energy healing points now if you really see the five, seven chakras here just note from the uh, below to the topmost region root chakra sacral chakra solar chakra heart chakra throat chakra eye chakra and the crown chakra the why of the science lies the science lies all the chakras have got some connection with the wrist through the respective nerve fibers to the respective organs if you see the region of the root chakra where the 396 hertz are being stimulated to stimulate the particular root chakra then all the organs associated with the root chakra will be stimulated so if those organs which are nearby the root chakra have been imbalanced are in diseased condition then by having the or restoring the 396 hertz which is the natural frequency of the root chakra you can resynthesize its own type of beneficial vibrational status and rajas cleans the particular elements in your body so that's the essential aspect of soma energetics and here i always mention that please browse through your youtube channels youtube uh, uh, videos where you will get a uh, lots of healing music to each pain like you can see the 174 hertz pain relief music the frequency music which is based upon that lots of videos are being seen here which will help you to relax to retrieve your lost uh, momentum of your body so before that i would also like 
to mention about in this case a very interesting aspect which has been proved scientifically we call it vibro acoustic sound therapy harmonic sound therapy this is again based upon the belief that every material in this universe has got its natural vibration capacity its harmonicity is there so the therapy is to restore the natural vibration to the crystal singing bowls tibetan meditation bowls you can see here the picture the seven chakras if they are perturbed they can be healed with the help of the singing bowls the set of seven pieces are there to heal respectively the seven chakras the ultimate thing is to increase your natural energy flow which opens and recalibrates your body's magnetic force that is your aura inside your body that is the mind body medication so this supports the release of the natural frequency at each and every cellular architecture cellular uh, mitis so that your cell based sound stimulation is being achieved so feel the healing vibes this is the concept of the day and with that healing frequency i always mention that there is also another term called binaural frequency if again if you browse through your youtube videos you will see that now as the sound is perceived uh, through different we have two ears so sound is as it is perceived at the level of brain brain interprets as a single tone but there is a some amount of difference in the frequency being utilized at the two parts of the pinna of the two ears so if you have 220 hertz coming from one side 200 coming from another side it is the difference which is interpreted in terms of binaural and you know the sound scientist i would say sound scientist or sound therapist deals with that this binaural the bits to ease various types of pains depending upon the energy healing points of the chakra points and lastly the chromotherapy when i say it's a color therapy this is again based upon the chakra because you know the eye chakra or the crown chakra or the throat chakra as the cases may be if you have suppose a throat problem if you have a problem with cough and cold throat problem if you have a problem of the thyroid which is there in the throat if you have a problem of cardiac ailments heart chakra if you have a problem with the reproductive uh, elements if you have a problem with excretory system elements you have the root chakra and the sacral chakra especially the sacral chakra so they have a healthy body or a healthy status of the body depends upon the natural free flow of energy so there are multiple energy centers please remember of which i have told about the seven which are considered as the major chakras major energy centers so if any imbalance if any part of this energy chakras get stuck then the particular organs the particular nerve which is there will be in pain and so in order to alleviate the pain you need to reset the chakra so using the different colors which are there which will actually activate that particular chakra like the colors being mentioned here the blue purple red orange yellow etc so you can see that by the help of the color you will be healed so that's the spread of healing vibes i can say from my aspect so to come to the end i would like to recollect myself as well as to you also the famous quote of charlie chaplin to truly love you must be able to take your pain and just play with it so that was the concept of charlie chaplin and i would therefore say in his continuation we have to build our mental setup to stay healthy physiologically neurologically cognitively psychologically and since today is happy independence day let's be be free from the pains anxiety mental pain chronic pain and we must help others also who are in pain so let's be free having the freedom of pain in this independence day and with that i would like to say that the pains when we say is a positive attitude in negative situation so if we are in pain it's good that we should be in pain so i have consulted many books and please you should be consulting all these books for relevance of your pain related studies there are lots of books on pain emotion cognition brain body cognition energy medicine and mindfulness psyche healing all are related to pain psychology pain biology and with that i would again like to thank 
my person, the organizers, the host institute, who have allowed me to say these things to you. And also thank you for your patient hearing. Hopefully you are not in pain. Hopefully after this talk, you will be, I will be able to uh, significantly decrease some of your at least mental pain. Thank you again. First of all, Priyanka, thank you for that wonderful talk of yours. Uh, you. Before going into the final thank you part, I, I just like to comment two to three things. You did an extensive area where you started with neurophysiology yes. and then you went into the genetics. And then I think so from there, the total physiology, how the neuro neurological part and the physiological part is connected. And the last part is a bit of a metaphysical part where you talked about the positivity yeah uh, since i myself am a reiki uh, uh, third degree holder so i know this sense of positivity so the last slides where you are talking i could relate a lot of it oh, so thank it was you. wonderful the, the domain which you spoke was vast so yes. you just transcended from one domain to another so smoothly but the domain over which you spoke was really vast so thank you but um, I'll ask my colleague to give a thank you vote officially. Dr. Trijit Nanda will give that. But Trijit, prior to that, there are some chat questions. Let uh, Kea take up the chat questions and then you give up the vote. Uh, sure. Thank you. Okay. Kea, are you there? Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are very much audible. So take up the chat. Okay. Yes. Uh, so I will.